Yeah, the Hamlin match was really exciting for us. It was a, a great senior night for our, our seven seniors. And, um, I mean, they really deserved the send-off that they got. And it was a pretty unique scenario where we actually got an opportunity to start all seven seniors at the same time. So that was something really special to see for the team. Um, from a performance way, side, I thought, you know, we handled business. There were some up and downs. We were clean in some areas. And, you know, we really need to address that, especially going into playoffs this week. But um, the overall match went as, as well as it possibly could. And then the family stuck around, and we had a really good time up here in the RCU and, and really celebrated our seniors. To talk about the Camry Meredith piece, um, just – to do double in the same season, 1,000 kills, 1,000 uh, digs, that's something really special. Um, the one thing we talked about as a staff, and, and you know, uh, it's really hard, especially for volleyball, to get 1,000 kills or hit that milestone on your home court because you're traveling so much at Division Three volleyball. And so the crowd that came out to support her and celebrate her when she got it was something really special, and she clearly deserved it. Yeah, the Whitewater match was, uh, I mean, it's something that it, it falls on me as well as the coach, right? The, like, we had a great, great game plan, but um, just our execution, it took us too long to start executing it. Um, so we have to reevaluate or maybe make some adjustments on a preparation piece to, to get our kids to be, or our women to be very confident in the game plan, more or less. Um, I, at the second set, I really just pulled them all in and I just said, look, regardless of what happens, like, we have to fight. Like, we just have to fight. And... I'm really proud of them. They did show that fight, and we talked about it in the locker room afterwards. I think there are some positive takeaways. Uh, one, you know, you're traveling really far to play a really good WIAC team, and if you look at our conference schedule or our, our conference playoff schedule, that's that's pretty much where we're at. We're going to travel really far, and we got to play a really good Platteville team. And if we win that, we travel really far to go play Whitewater again. And if we win that, and Oshkosh still stay, remains number one, we have to travel really far and then play at Oshkosh. And so. You know, there's some experience to be taken away, even though it's not the result you wanted. Uh, but hopefully, you know, we focus on the right things and we put our best foot forward. Yeah, I think uh, when you're playing Platteville, you're playing a really disciplined team this year. Uh, I think they do a lot of uh, things really well. They serve really well. Um, they have a couple of key players that are, are pretty much top of the conference and leaderboards for attacks and, and kills. And so for us, it's it's going to be coming down to can you take care of the ball when you have opportunities and the ball's on your side of the court. Um, and I think we have to be really good at letting go of some of the runs. Uh, I think when you play a match like that, you have to kind of draw back to your Oshkosh game and your Eau Claire game where it's like, you know, you have to stay with the team point for point all the way to about 18 to 20 points. And then somewhere in that area, one team's going to pull away. And so can you be the team that puts yourself in that position and play clean volleyball? And, and if you make an error or if there's a point that doesn't go your way, how quickly can you let it go? So, um, that's pretty much the game plan for us. And then from a preparation standpoint, it's get ready to ride the bus for a really long time.